it is what it is and some people are what they are so that's that's fine I cried I teared up it hit me okay so mission accomplished Dana Hawkins also has another book coming out in August so I don't know if I should just wait nah I will not I was not expecting that I wanted the unhinged it was like okay 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 and then oh Okay. Hey lovely lover readers and queers, welcome back to my channel. I am Franny and today I'm here to talk to you about all the books that I read in the month of February. In February I was kind of having some trouble sleeping. I was not sleeping enough and that resulted in me not being able to actually read physical text with my own eyeballs. That is why in February I read a total of six books, five of which were audiobooks, which is great, I'm not complaining, but that's that's the reason behind it. So I read six books, five audiobooks and one ebook, which was a graphic novel, so you know, not a lot of text to actually read that checks out and I have an average rating of four stars which is pretty good so I'm really happy with how the month went. Without further ado let's dive in. Also because I have to go in 30 minutes so we kind of need to wrap this up real quick. The first audiobook that I finished in the month of February is the audiobook that I mentioned in my January wrap-up that I was currently reading at the end of January and that is Iona Iverson's Rule for Commuting by Claire Pooley. The audiobook was narrated by Claire Corbett and I really recommend the audiobook. It was so so good so if you want to read this book the audiobook is the way to go. I just I just loved her narration so much. She gave so much life to Iona as a character and I loved it. In this book we follow Iona Iverson. She is an old lesbian advice columnist and every weekday in the morning and in the evening she takes the same train to Waterloo Station and back to go to work. And she sits always in the same train car, always in the same spot, with her dog Lulu seated next to her. And so every day she sees in the same train car the same people, you know, the regulars that take that train to go to work. But Iona's first rule of commuting is not to talk to strangers. That's, you know, the main rule when you go on public transport. However, one day one of these regulars is about to choke on a grape and so she has to engage to try and help and that starts a chain reaction where she talks to other regulars in this train car and one thing leads to another, we have our cast of characters. I don't remember all their names but we have Sanjay who is a nurse who cares a lot about his patients, so much so that he suffers from anxiety, he has panic attacks because of all the things that he has to deal with in his daily job. I think he works in the oncology wing in his hospital. Then there's Amy who works in digital marketing and she doesn't know yet but she's in a toxic relationship. I don't remember her name. We have a high school girl who is being slut shamed because her boyfriend shared her naked pictures with the school. Then we have another character whose name I don't remember because I didn't really like him. He is an investment banker who made the wrong investments and now finds himself in a bit of a tough financial situation. And then of course we have Iona Iverson, the star, the real main character of the book. I loved her so, so much. She is an old married lesbian, so quirky and so weird, with so much personality, so colorful. She's so strong and she fully takes advantage of the stubbornness that comes with her age. She has an incredible past. She used to be very famous in her heyday sometime in the 60s I think. She and her wife used to be invited to all the cool parties where they could meet people and interview them and write articles about you know the nightlife and art and culture and all those things. And her pen name back then, and this is brilliant, was Iona Yacht. So I own a yacht, you know, it's kind of a wordplay. But she's still a human being, right? She still has her insecurities, she still has a lot to deal with in her personal private life and I loved how her confident, strong, unapologetic personality doesn't really protect her and distance her from the feeling of being irrelevant in a society where old people are not relevant anymore. They become obsolete and their talent, their skill, their past is not recognized and valued as it used to be and even though she's been at this magazine for literally decades she is being made redundant because 
because she doesn't know how to use the social media she doesn't know how to engage with a younger audience because her advice column doesn't really match with young people's problems anymore so we follow all that and it was so beautiful so touching this is such a heartwarming kind-hearted wholesome novel where we have literally a bunch of strangers that meet on a train and come together to help each other with their life problems and daily struggles and are there for each other when others don't show up. It can be dark a little bit at times because you know it deals with some pretty heavy topics but it does so in a very wonderful sweet way. I just loved this book so so much and I gave it a 4.5 stars. The only character I could not care for was the white male investment banker because I feel like his personal journey is the one that has the least payoff. Like yes, he became a better person but that's that was still not enough. He's not as good as the others as a person and that kind of shows in what he says and what he thinks but you know it is what it is and some people are what they are so that's that's fine. I just really love this book and I totally recommend it and I gave it 4.5 stars and I am for sure going back to read her debut which I think was called The Authenticity Project and she has another book coming out later this year that is on my TBR list and I cannot wait to get to. The second book that I read in February was Most Ardently by Gabe Cole Navoa. This is a queer YA retelling of Pride and Prejudice. It is the ninth book in the Remixed Classics series and the audiobook was narrated by Harrison Knights. And again, if you're interested in reading this book, I really recommend you go with the audiobook because I think the narrator did a very great job with this one. <sighs> I liked this book. It was well written, but I did have some issues with it. One of them being the fact that, to me personally, it was a bit too close to the source material. It was literally the same, with the only difference that the main character is not Elizabeth Bennet, but is Oliver Bennet, who is a trans boy. But I do have a video up on my channel where I talk about this book, I review it, I share my thoughts, my pros and cons, and and I try to have a discussion about retellings so if you haven't watched it yet I recommend you go and watch it and please leave a comment about what makes a good retelling for you I would love to know but if you have watched it I want to thank you because that video is going pretty well and I was not expecting it to be honest so thank you so much for watching it and appreciating it it makes me so so happy Thank you about that. Anyways, going back to the book, more could have been done according to me and I gave it three stars. The ebook that I read was Bingo Love by T. Franklin. This is a queer graphic novel about two girls who meet I think in middle grade or high school and they become friends instantly. Then they become so much more but this is in the 60s, 50s, something like that and of course the families do not approve, they get find out and one of them is sent away. So, you know, they have their own lives, they marry, they have kids, and then 40 years into the future, they meet each other again and their love reignites and they decide to finally be together after 40 years of being apart because their love is still there and is still going strong. And it was lovely. I think it was a bit too fast paced considering all that is there to unpack. As you can imagine, because we have these two women who were separated because, you know, of church and religion and beliefs and homophobia of their families, and then they marry and have kids, and then they divorce and get back together. Like, there's a lot going on there that you cannot unpack in a graphic novel, okay? You can kind of see that, that is resolved way too fast, way too easily, but you have a sapphic love story this deep, okay? Like when they got back together, when they married eventually, and the fact that they were together at last in their old age, I cried, I teared up, it hit me, okay? So mission accomplished, I give it 3.75 stars and you know, it was fast, it was sweet, it made me emotional, so you know, 
a good graphic novel in the end. The third audiobook that I listened to but that I have a physical copy of is Not in the Plan by Dana Hawkins. This is the first book in the Single in Seattle companion novel series and in this one we follow Charlie and Mac. Charlie is the owner of a coffee shop bakery and Mac is a writer whose debut was a big success and now is in a sort of writer block. She's She's trying to work on the second novel but it's not going as well as she was hoping it to go. She's behind schedule, she's struggling and she was living in New York and in this book she goes back to Seattle at her parents house to stay there for some time while she tries to write and one morning she goes to Charlie's coffee shop to try and write and there she finds her inspiration, her muse, Charlie and the two get to know each other, start talking and you know eventually fall in love. This is a Safi Croman's book, of course they're going to fall in love. I won't say too much about it now because once I read the second book in this companion novel series, which is coming out in March, by the way, so very soon. Once I read that one as well, I kind of want to make a separate video about these two books because if the second one is as good as the first one, I have myself a new favorite women loving women author and that's great. I love that journey for me. I want to give some spotlight to this series. I will make a video about this, right? Dana Hawkins also has another book coming out in August. So I don't know if I should just wait. Nah, I will not. I really loved this one. I really did. I love the fact that it was sweet, that it did not develop too fast too soon, that characters, you know, were dealing with things in their private lives. Charlie's dealing with an alcoholic father who was never really there for her. She has abandonment issues because she was married and then her wife left her. Mac has OCD and panic attacks and might be neurodivergent even if it's never said on the page. And yes, it was steamy but in a fade to black sort of way, like some scenes were a bit more explicit it, but we don't really have a full-on sex scene and sometimes that's okay like sometimes you want to read a romance book that is just about the romance it doesn't get too steamy so for readers who look for that in their romance books this is definitely for you and it just kind of fit with the vibe of the book with how you know romantic and sweet it was even the third art conflict was there yes of course because you could not not have it in a romance book but it was realistic it got resolved and it was not too dramatic as others are. I just really loved this book. I think it's really um, cute. It made me fall in love with Seattle and the coffee culture and now I want to go to Seattle but it's so far, god damn it. And I loved how the chapters had a title and the title fit the mood of that chapter and where we were with the story but it was also like a coffee drink sort of or a drink that you can find at a coffee shop. For instance, the 12th chapter is titled Charlie's Drink Special, Cozy Comfort Spiced Chai. So, you know, it kind of, it, it really fits the vibe of this book and I, I just really, really loved it five stars. The audiobook was narrated by Elise Roth and she did such a great job and she's such a sweet person and she also narrates the second book in this series that is coming out so I, I cannot wait to listen to the audiobook. It's going to be amazing. After that I listened to the audiobook of With a Kiss We Die by L.R. Dorn. This is a married duo who writes under this pen name and this book is a mystery thriller where we follow a podcast or a podcast host as she is contacted by a suspect in a murder investigation investigation and we follow her as she goes to live with this suspect and kind of follows the story up close so that she can record and put out podcast episodes as the story unfolds and not after the fact has happened. This murder suspect is an 18 year old who is accused with his girlfriend to have murdered his parents who have been stabbed like a hundred times, something like that, so a very brutal murder. So this book is not written as a novel. This book is written as if you were reading the script of a podcast, right? If you listen to the audiobook, which I think is 
the only way to go with this book if we want to be honest it's like you are listening to the rinse report which is the name of this podcast and you are listening to the episodes of this podcast as they are put out and so we follow the story as this podcast host Rayana Rains is shaping it and witnessing the events and narrating the events I really really loved this audiobook okay I read it over the course of two days like literally a week and I started it on a Saturday morning and I finished it on Sunday night. I was cleaning the house, going through spring cleaning, and I basically listened to the whole thing. So it is highly bingeable, highly addictive, just like a podcast would be. I was a bit disappointed with the ending. We were really diving into the characters' psyches, and I think that the ending could have been much more of a twist, right? It could have been more unhinged. There could have been more revelations to make the suspense that had been building up throughout the whole book explode. And I think that was not done. I feel like it was a bit of a missed opportunity, but I really loved the text. I really loved the book and you can really tell that the authors appreciate podcast hosts and what they do in the podcast world. There's so much love and appreciation there, which was so nice to see. I just wished that the book had gone there, you know, that it would have been as twisted as it could have been and it wasn't and that was a bit of a shame. My camera just fell, which is wonderful. I want to apologize if you keep seeing the angle, I want to say, slightly shift throughout the whole video, but I do not have a tripod today and the camera is just slowly, you know, doing this as I feel. So I'm trying to adapt to it as best as I can, but I, I do apologize about that. Anyways, as I was saying, the ending was a little bit of a disappointment, but I loved the journey. The journey was incredible. If you want to listen to a great full cast audiobook while you're doing something, this, this is just absolutely perfect. Do yourself a favor and listen to it. And the last book that I have to talk about, and I'll be super quick with this, is A Novel Obsession by Caitlin Barash. And this was narrated by my adored Kristen C, which is why I think I listened to this book as fast as I did. Otherwise, I, I cannot explain it to myself because the pacing of this book is so weird, like nothing really happens. We basically follow this 24-year-old girl who works at a bookstore. She's called Naomi and she has met Caleb, this wonderful, kind, sweet man that she's going out with. They've been together for a few months and suddenly she becomes obsessed obsessed with Caleb's ex. And so not only she starts following her, but she decides to befriend her and she decides that the novel that she's trying to write is going to be about this girl, this ex, and about herself following and befriending this ex. So you can see how fucked up that is. You can see that is going to lead to some problems, right? Because they all live in New York and there are many instances in which she is with Caleb, they are out and Rosemary is there. Rosemary is the name of the ex. And, you know, she has to try and get herself out of the situation. The camera is going down again. I am so sorry. I don't know what to do. I am struggling today. It's not easy. Please forgive me. She's truly becoming obsessed with this girl and this of course comes from a deep-rooted insecurity and a need for good therapy but it was like watching something bad that you know is about to go down but you cannot tear your eyes away from it that keeps you you know wanting to keep going with the story and see where it goes and the fact is that with these sort of texts right where that morbid curiosity comes in you are waiting for that very unhinged ending right because things have to go bad at some point like it, it has to go there like either she stops and she seeks help and that's it or something bad is about to go down and she's about to go crazy and something unhinged is going to happen and that's not the case i feel like after this whole quiet building up in quiet suspense and her just like narrowly saving herself and you know getting herself out of every possible situation that could explode. I was waiting for it to just go boom and it didn't. It had a very realistic ending. I was not expecting that. I wanted to be unhinged because that's what the whole vibe and feel of the book was. It was like okay 
okay, 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 and then, oh, okay. So it was disappointing in that sense, but it is a perfectly well-written book and the story did keep me engaged. It does deal with a lot of human emotions and reactions to situations and human insecurities, especially when you have just started a new relationship, but it didn't have the evolution that I thought it was gonna have for how it was building up and that was a bit of a shame, but I did enjoy this book and I would perhaps recommend it to a very specific audience. Anyways, I give it 3.5 stars. Hi, so I forgot to talk about what I'm currently reading, so I'm gonna do it now as I walk to work. <laughs> I am currently listening to Everyone in This Room Will Someday Be Dead by Emily Austin, and I am loving it. It's freaking brilliant, and I am just loving the audiobook. And I am currently reading two books, actually. Here We Go Again by Alison Cochran. I'm trying to do a reading vlog with that one. I hope it turns out okay as I would like it to, you know, in my mind. And I'm also currently reading The Heartbreak Bakery by A.R. Capetta that I put on hold um, for a second because I kind of switched to Here We Go Again. But, oh, it's so nice when cars don't let you cross. So nice of them. Um, yeah, I put it on pause momentarily because I wanted to read Here We Go Again first. Um, but I was loving that one um, as well. And all of these are, you know, queer books. So I am really loving that. And I am, I'm just happy because I'm really loving everything that I've been reading and currently reading and all that. So, yay. And this was it for the month of February. Thank you so much for watching these very um, shifty February wrap up. I do apologize for that. Even the sun came up. I mean, I started filming at dawn and now is morning and I have to go to work. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Let me know in the comments if you have read any of these books, if you would like to, and let me know what you read in February and what was your favorite read. I think mine was not in the plan. I will see you very soon with another video, but until then, have a good one, take care, and keep reading queer books. Warm hugs. Bye.